Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today is day five, the last day of this week where I've been doing the Darkest Shades series. Our fifth foundation is going to be the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I think this is one of the most expensive foundations that I've ever bought. It was about $65. I have it here in the shade 14. This is the last shade that they carry. Online, it was a way darker <laughs> than this. So this happens to be one of those foundations where it's the pictures online are just a little bit darker than what they are in real life. But yes, this was a lot darker online and it said it was deep with red undertones and I was like yes that's right up my lane. There's a lot of things that I want to say about this foundation but I'm going to save them to the end so make sure you stay tuned. It says improves texture, blurs imperfections, and comes in 24 shades to match every unique skin tone. <laughs> Um, how to apply, you use a beauty blender for radiant airbrush finish. And I think that is it, so it's gonna be medium. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just pump this bad boy right onto my face. Alrighty guys, so this is what I'm getting right now. I'm honestly really confused because it almost looks like I have nothing on. Obviously, since it's lighter than what I normally wear on my face, it's kind of a little gray, but I thought it was gonna look a lot worse than this. So I don't know, I think when I add a little bit more on, just to see if I get a little bit more coverage, What? I am not mad. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and set my face with the RCMA No Color Powder. Alrighty guys, so this is what this foundation looks like on right now. I'm gonna pull down my shirt just a little bit so you guys can see it in comparison to my chest. And that's what I'm getting. All right, so yes, I'm gonna go ahead and come back at the end of the night and I'll tell you guys what I liked and what I didn't like about this foundation. Alrighty guys, so I'm back. It's been about seven hours now. When I first pulled this foundation out of the bottle, I was a little concerned, because like I said, it came out a lot lighter than what I saw online. And it seemed like I didn't have enough of the red undertones that I was looking for. But I know it says that it is a light to medium coverage. So I think that's the only thing that saved this foundation this time because it honestly does not look as bad as I thought it was going to look. When I first put it on though and said everything, there was a little bit of grayness. That's probably because of the fact that it was a little bit lighter and not enough of the redder undertones that I need for my skin. But like I said, I expected a lot worse. Besides the fact that it is just a little bit grayer because of the fact that it's just a little too light and it's wrong undertone, the finish on this foundation is beautiful. It's an amazing finish. It's like super glowy. Like it gives you, even though like I look a little gray, I feel like I'm still getting that sheen, like that glow coming through which is really nice. That's the kind of finish that I normally like to go for. I definitely feel like if it would have just went up maybe one or two more shades and um, a little bit more of the redder undertone, this would be a foundation that I'd be really excited about because the finish is really beautiful. Did not break down as much as I've seen other foundations break down. I normally go for a more full coverage finish, but I don't know, something about this formula just really, really worked for me. I like the formula. But there was one other thing that really, really bothered me about this foundation, and it's about other foundations too. There were only three shades for deeper skin tones. If you skip shades, it doesn't count. It basically defeats the purpose of inclusivity if you're skipping around and skipping the shades. One company that I saw that was extremely guilty of it is YSL. I know we've all seen that post flying around of the new YSL foundation. I honestly don't remember the name of the foundation, but it had like literally one dark shade, maybe two, maybe like one of them could have passed, maybe. And when I went in store to Sephora, I saw the actual display. They literally had one shade. And I did swatch that one shade. I swatched it on my hand and it seemed like it would be something that might work. 
but it does not count when you skip shades. Like, you don't get to just skip to the end and think that it's inclusive. Like, it doesn't work that way. That's why I do this, though. It's basically a reference point for people with deep skin like me so that we can figure out how to navigate through this foundation world and other products as well, of course, but also to bring awareness to these companies that maybe are just naive to it or also what they can do to improve it. If they really care enough, they'll listen and they'll see what they can do to improve their shade range or improve a specific product or something like that. Um, that's why I do this. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump this straight into swatches now. So this one right here is the Giorgio Armani. This one right here is the Danessa Myricks. Then I've got the Urban Decay. This is the Lancome. And then this shade right here is the LA Girl. But yeah, um, that's just a swatch of all of them together. You guys can see how the Giorgio Armani foundation could have definitely went very, very left if it was not um, that light to medium coverage. <laughs> I think that's all I have for this foundation. Thank you guys so much for hanging in there and watching and commenting and giving me all this love and support. You guys are amazing. I am truly blessed. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this week as much as I have. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Lots of love and I'll see you guys next time.